WLRN edition 73 broadcasting in 3, 2, 1. I was born a man off my knees. I will stand for my liberation. Sisters, rise again. I was born a man off my knees. I will stand for my liberation. Rise and rise again. Greetings, and welcome to the six-year anniversary edition podcast of Women's Liberation Radio News for this Thursday, May 5th, 2022. I'm Thistle Pedersen, founding member of this online feminist community-powered radio station, WLRN, a project co-created in direct response to WORT 89.9 FM censorship and banning of lesbian and radical feminist views news, analysis, and commentary. That's right, we are celebrating six years together as a collective of radical feminist media activists born of censorship. This edition marks the 73rd time we came together as women to produce this show. WLRN would not exist without the dedication of longtime members Sekhmet Shiaul, Jenna DeQuarto, April Null, and Emily Ann Lorenzen. Love you, ladies. Thanks for sticking with this project for so long. We have created a snapshot every month for six years of what on-the-ground feminist news, culture, and activism looks like. To hear all 73 podcasts, visit our website, womensliberationradionews.com, and click on the podcast tab. There you will find a complete archive of our monthly episodes that we began creating back in May of 2016. I, Thistle, am also a singer-songwriter with a new album of original music called Spinning and Weaving. That album in CD form was just made available at the Sisters for Sisters conference last month. I am thrilled that so many of the women in attendance got to take home a little square box of my original songs to play, complete with a handcrafted booklet full of pics and poems describing my life over the past few years. You, too, can purchase my new album at thistlepetterson.com. I made the album during the pandemic in my old childhood friend's basement, along with other talented musicians who contributed. It was a joy to be back in the studio again, creating music. In this month's edition, we reflect on the WLRN Downtown Public Library Speakers Panel event that happened April 23rd, in Madison, Wisconsin, my hometown. In addition, we reflect on the many Sisters for Sisters feminist events surrounding the public library discussion. WLRN team members April and Jenna combed through footage of both the library talk and the sound signals and actions happening on the ground as feminists swarmed the top of State Street for a lively speaker's corner in which over a dozen women spoke their minds amidst the taunting and jabber of trans activists who attempted to displace and interrupt the feminists on the steps of the Capitol. Before we begin the show with Jen Billick's special gender industry report, I wanted to give a big WLRN shout out to Beth Lowe, Lear Keith, Arla Heil, Carrie Bruss, Jennifer Thomas, Katie Jean of Femax News, Serendipity Day, A. Raquel, Axel Lansick, Jeanette Cooper, Kelly Kay, Elizabeth Chesick, Liz Miller, Beth Stalser, Charlie Jacobs, Jessica Gonzalez, Miriam Ben Shalom, Mary Jo Walters, Lynn Meeker, Kay Yang, and Amy Souza. All of these women made a tremendous contribution to the Sisters for Sisters and Courage Calls to Courage events in Madison last month. It is breathtaking and energizing to experience women coming together in our unity of purpose, breaking the sound barrier women are blocked by under the status quo rule of men, and building female solidarity. Thank you women for staying focused and hardworking, both leading up to events and while on the ground. 
It is an honor to know you and to stand shoulder to shoulder. The team at WLRN produces a monthly radio broadcast to break the sound barrier women are blocked by under the status quo rule of men. This blocking of women's discourse we see in all sectors of society, be they conservative, liberal, mainstream, progressive, or radical. The thread that runs through all of American politics, except for separatist feminism, is male dominance and entitlement in all spheres. To start off today's edition, here's Jennifer Billick's special gender industry report. Hi all, this is Jennifer Billick reporting on the global gender industry from the 11th Hour blog for WLRN. Since my last report, which included a segment about Elon Musk, his Neuralink project, in which he envisions humanity's interlacing with AI, Musk has purchased Twitter. While many believe this is a win for free speech that women will suddenly be able to discuss the gender industry and its harms freely, I invite you to consider the fact that the more speech we deliver to the tech giants, the more data we supply to them for their vision of a metaverse, a neurolink, and a singularity. How free will we be in this scenario? Tech has and will continue to change us in ways we can't even fathom because it is growing exponentially and because only the rich actually ever get a say in how it is utilized. A series of three recent blog posts on the global page of the 11th Hour blog shows us how the internet as it intersects with unfettered capitalism is driving the corporate construct of synthetic sex identities. The posts were written by a mother of a young woman lost to the techno-religious cult of gender identity. The mother calling herself Mother's Grimm set out to research the influences on her daughter's social media platforms and discovered a young woman, Chase Ross, who has taken on a corporately constructed synthetic sex identity of male. Her maleness is an illusion manifested with drugs and surgeries and is driven by the techno-medical complex propaganda and funding for profit and social engineering. Chase Ross has manifested a small fortune from grooming the next generation of young women on YouTube into the synthetic sex identity industry, convincing them that changing sex is possible, that it's a cool identity. She has created a funnel of passive income selling products ranging from sex toys to drugs to combat the baldness women experience from ingesting wrong sex hormones she teaches them where to get off-label testosterone, how to inject it or snort it. Cross-marketing with other influencers across social media platforms such as Tumblr, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouNow, WordPress, Patreon, as well as Apple Podcast, Chase has gone from 1,000 subscribers to over 1 million in just over a decade. It is unimaginable how many young women she and her friends are impacting and drawing into this cult. Most of our mainstream media platforms are run by conglomerates that interface with the techno-medical complex, where synthetic sex identities are created and marketed from, which is why it is so difficult to critique the gender industry publicly. The only narrative allowed is that of the techno-medical complex driving synthetic sex identities. Will Elon Musk invested in a transhumanist agenda allow for critique? What has been called gender identity is being protected by our nation's laws, and Musk has already stated he will remain within the bounds of the law when deciding what free speech will be. If he does allow for critique of the synthetic sex identity industry, will this help to feed the data needed for his Neuralink vision, which will secure humanity's interfacing with AI? These are important questions to ask and understand before jumping on Musk's free speech bandwagon. Chase Ross has a lot of free speech. Is it helping or hurting today's young women? Should we as women continue to invest in men's technological plans for futurism without us? Or can we begin to draw ourselves away from the labyrinth of the internet's web, build back print media and real communities? We need to think differently. We need to think smarter instead of believing in false saviors. Thank you for listening. This has been a special report from the 11th Hour blog for Women's Liberation Radio News.
Now we turn to our new monthly segment called Getting Organized with Elizabeth Miller. This month, she spoke with Jessica Gonzalez, one of the panelists at the library in Madison at Courage Calls to Courage, and also the founder of Turf Collective. I'm here with Jessica Gonzalez of the Turf Collective, and I really want to thank you for talking to me today, Jessica. I appreciate it. And I wanted to just ask you, um, this: the purpose of this segment is to sort of help women get ideas about grassroots organizing, and you are definitely very much a grassroots organizer. And so I just wanted to ask you, like, how did you get the idea for Turf Collective? What was your purpose in starting it, and how did you start? it and then maybe a little bit about like what some of your main projects have been and what you'd like to do in the future. Sure. So why I started Turf Collective was merely because um, I've noticed, you know, of course, Facebook has so many (laughs) turfs and we're always arguing with TRAs, sometimes even arguing with each other. And I just thought it would be really good to have a time and a place and a space for us to come together and meet. And we could use that time and space to either strategize about how we were arguing with TRAs or just strategize about, you know, um, actions and activities and things that we wanted to do, or just come together just to talk and share our experiences of in face-to-face dialogue. So really that's where Turf Collective came from is wanting us to have meetings as opposed to just talking to each other in threads, um, here and there, kind of spotty, just ma- really just make it more of a community. Uh, and- yeah. Yeah. I was just going to ask you like how you went from it being more of a, a chat to deciding to do some activism. But what keeps my interest in particular is action And a lot of the women that I was attracting were seeking to be able to contribute uh, in in contribute to the movement as well. Um, So that's what led us to become a little bit more action oriented. It's still a lot of talk. right? So there you know, it's not like there's some requirement that we all have to be activists or very strong activists, but that is kind of our, our, we do lean towards that. We, we do want to do what we can to contribute to solving this problem. Mm -hmm. And I know you did uh, the target action last summer um, or last year sometime. Um, Do you have ideas? Does the group have ideas about like other kinds of activism you hope to do in the future? Well, right now we're kind of we're kind of looking for what we'll do next, I think. I think a lot about um yeah, so we had the target action over the summer and I'm really proud of that. That's really great and people are still doing it. I mean, I was just asked for a version of the of the target flyer uh 3 days ago, a woman wanted to go out and do it and I'm like, yeah, oh, because that's still perfectly valid. In the mm-hmm. fall, we released a pamphlet it's called People May Call You a Turf, and it's a six-panel pamphlet that outlines, you know, basically a lot of arguments for, or like, against transgender ideology, what our arguments are as TERFs, why, why you should support women's sex-based rights and things like that. And I've been thinking about taking that concept of the pamphlet and maybe we go out and we place those in library books specifically and things like that. So I'm, I, I, for some reason, I really want to go to libraries. I, I really want to put the books in, uh, put, put our information into libraries and just all these other general places um, where women will just stumble onto the information. Mm-hmm. So what I really want to hammer home to women is uh, you, you don't need other people's permission to, to do something. Exactly. And you can decide what that something is. Um, you can decide what works for you, what works for your life. But if you want to come out and try to work with other activists and organizers and get something bigger going, that's really great too. But you don't need to put that much pressure on yourself. Um, you can just start wherever you are with whatever idea, large or small, you think will, will help 
will 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 add something to this fight. So that's what I I really wanted to encourage women. Thanks, Elizabeth and Jessica. Next up, we hear WLRN's World News segment with Emily Ann Lorenzen for this Thursday, May 5th, 2022. Take it away, Emily. Thanks, Thistle. In Lebanon, the number of women dying from pregnancy-related complications has nearly tripled over the past three years due to an economic crisis that has seen doctors and midwives leave the country. Children are also dying, especially among Syrian refugees, who make up about a quarter of the population. According to UNICEF, a third of children could not access health care by October 2021, and there has been a dramatic increase in the number of children who die within the first four weeks after birth. Some women are also not able to access health care because of rising costs, limited access, and difficulty finding transportation. In Australia, federal Liberal candidate Catherine Deves says her family has left Sydney due to receiving death threats after making Twitter posts about her stance on transgender issues. The tweets have since been deleted, but one was reported to have said that, quote, half of all males with trans identities are sex offenders, unquote. She is the co-founder of Save Women's Sport, Astralasia, and she is against surrogacy, claiming it is a human rights violation. Prime Minister Scott Morrison has come to her defense, stating, quote, She is a woman standing up for women and girls and their access to fair sport in this country. I am not going to allow her to be silenced, unquote. After receiving hundreds of complaints, The Financial Conduct Authority, or FCA, in the UK has decided to not include trans-identified males and female diversity targets for boards and senior management roles. The financial watchdog states that at least 40% of board members at firms should be female, but companies can now decide for themselves how to report female diversity levels. Maya Forstater, and executive director of the women's rights campaign group Sex Matters said, quote, The FCA was wise to allow companies to report straightforwardly on the proportion of male and female members of its board, in line with the Equality Act and the Companies Act, and not to start requiring them to ask board members to declare that they have one of the many fluid gender identities. It is not for the financial regulator to redefine what man and woman mean, unquote. The Florida Health Department has advised against gender-affirming care for children and adolescents, including social and medical transition. These guidelines do not apply to children with disorders of sex development. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services supports gender-affirming care, and the federal guidance can be found online. Florida Surgeon General Joseph Latipo said, quote, The federal government's medical establishment releasing guidance failing at the most basic level of academic rigor shows that this was never about health care. It was about injecting political ideology into the health of our children. Children experiencing gender dysphoria should be supported by family and seek counseling, not pushed into an irreversible decision before they reach 18, unquote. Minnesota became the first state to develop a task force for missing and murdered black women and girls last year. The task force would continue to meet through the end of this year, analyzing data and working on legislation. Representative Ruth Richardson has introduced a bill that would create a permanent state office to provide resources for missing black women and girls and the office would continue the work started by the task force. In the United States, an estimated 64,000 to 75,000 black women and girls are reported missing. TikTok is under investigation for child sexual abuse content and predatory behavior on the social media app, which the U.S. Department of Homeland Security Chief of Child Exploitation Investigations, Aaron Burke, calls the, quote, platform of choice, unquote, for sexual predators. 
Others have called TikTok a quote-unquote hunting ground for exploiters seeking to groom, abuse, and traffic children. TikTok is especially attractive for this purpose because of its popularity with minors. 25% of U.S. TikTok users are between the ages of 10 and 19. The social media platform is being investigated by both the Department of Homeland Security for its handling of child pornography and the Department of Justice for predatory behavior on the app. TikTok representatives have stated that they have quote-unquote zero tolerance for child sexual abuse materials and that they are quote, deeply committed to the safety and well-being of minors, unquote. Nonetheless, child exploitation cases related to the app increased sevenfold between 2019 and 2021. Feminist activist and scholar Raquel Rosario Sanchez announced on April 21st that she had lost her case against the University of Bristol, where she is a PhD student. Sanchez had sued the university for negligence, breach of contract, and sex discrimination after the university failed to protect her from a years-long targeted campaign of harassment and violent threats launched by trans activist students. Sanchez describes being called, quote, turf, scum, trash, nasty, bigot, heinous, and sickening, unquote, during feminist events and reports that people were encouraged on social media to throw eggs and milkshakes at her. Although the judge in the case acknowledged that Sanchez had been the victim of, quote, violent, threatening, intimidating behavior or language, unquote, he dismissed all her claims against the university, stating that, quote, no actionable breach of duty has been identified, unquote. Although disappointed by the court's decision, Sanchez writes, quote, while this outcome was unexpected, there is no regret, no anger, and no sadness with my heart about this. Standing up to bullies and the academic institutions that protect them will always be the right decision, unquote. Now that the court has ruled against her, Sanchez may find herself responsible for the university's legal fees. Donations to assist Sanchez with these costs can be made on her Crowd Justice page. On Sunday, April 24th, hundreds of women marched through downtown Mexico City to protest the recent murder of the 18-year-old girl, Debani Escobar and Monterey, while demonstrators in the suburb of Netzahul al Coitol marched for two women who were murdered there in the week before the protest. The women carried signs that read, quote, Mexico is a mass grave, unquote, and taped posters of missing women to the Angel of Independence, one of Mexico City's most iconic monuments. 1,600 women have been reported missing in Mexico so far this year, and the number of known femicides rose from 977 in 2020 to 1,015 in 2021. A trans-identified male inmate at Rikers Island Jail Complex in New York has been sentenced to seven years for sexually assaulting a female inmate. Ramel Blount, who uses the name Diamond, was housed in Rikers Rose M. Singer Center for female detainees in February 2021 when he attacked a female inmate in the bathroom as she came out of the shower. Blount pleaded guilty to attempted rape on April 7th and has received a seven-year prison sentence with an additional eight years of court supervision to follow his release. He must also register as a sex offender. This comes after New York Governor Kathy Hochul's January 2021 proposal to allow male inmates in the state to transfer into women's prison on the basis of gender identity claims. On April 13th, Wart 89.9 FM, Madison, Wisconsin's community radio station since 1975, announced that they will no longer permit lesbian and radical feminist content on their airwaves if it expresses concerns critical of transgenderism. This banning of feminist content can be traced back to three access hour programs 
WLRN member Thistle Pennerson conducted on Wart, including an interview with Sheila Jeffries in 2014, a Mitchfest radio documentary in 2015, and interviews featuring Julie Bindle and Megan Murphy in 2018. As stated in the greeting, it is this censorship that led to the creation of WLRN and the 73 episodes we have currently archived on our website and SoundCloud page. On April 23rd, dozens of women and trans activists gathered at the top of State Street in Madison, Wisconsin for the WLRN Speakers Corner event, an event modeled after the famous Speakers Corner in Hyde Park, London, where ordinary citizens debate the issues of the day. In contrast to how citizens behave in London, trans activists used noisemakers, bullhorns, and whistles to attempt to silence the women speaking. Despite this, Jenna DeQuarto and Kay Yang took charge of the situation, and WLRN was able to produce high-quality video and audio of the women speaking, even with the distractions and noise all around them. Thistle Pedersen had applied for and received a City of Madison permit for the event, but the police did not honor the permit, saying that their higher priority was to keep the peace by allowing the trans activists to take up the permitted space in a disruptive manner. Can you let us know what the safety issue is, why you won't remove the people who don't have the permit? We're not going to create a war. We are peacekeepers and we're not going to create a war. How is that creating a war? Because there's already been problems. Like what? I'm, I'm just, not, I'm just, just trying, to, get I'm into trying it. to understand yeah. why we can't yeah. have the space that I, we have. We have a permit. I'm not going to get into it. We'll keep the peace. Oh. Well, this isn't well, peaceful it's not right very now. This peaceful is not peaceful that we've been forced kicked to out of our from space the spot that we that have we a permit for. That's not peaceful. We've also, I mean, I don't know if you're I, hearing I, I the threats. Under, I can understand that. Do you take threats but, of violence seriously? We're going to keep the peace as much as possible. But what my suggestion is for you is remove yourself from a bad situation. But when there's a threat of violence, what do remove you do about that? Remove yourself from a bad situation. But that silences us, though. They're They're trying to keep the peace. I, I understand. About free speech, because that's very important as well. Free speech we're, is peace. We're, we're, we're. At the beginning of the event, the women decided to get up on the steps in front of the giant TRA banner and begin singing, quote, woman, adult, human, female, unquote, in a rousing chorus. Upon discovering that TRAs did not retaliate against this bold move, the women and TRAs began to mix and mingle a bit, as women attempted to have open dialogue and conversation with some of them. To view the entire WLRN Speaker's Corner held in Madison on April 23rd, visit our YouTube channel. There were no major local or national media present for this historic event, since there is a well-documented media blackout in Madison of lesbian and radical feminist views, news, and commentary. That concludes WLRN's World News segment for Thursday, May 5th, 2022. I'm Emily Ann Lorenzen. Share your news stories, announcements, and tips with us by emailing info at womensliberationradionews.com and let us know what's going on. If it wasn't for the women, women, we would not be living, living. We would not be joyful, singing, loving, and beloved again. If it wasn't for the women, women, we would not be living, living. We would not be joyful, singing, loving, and beloved. Keep going. If it wasn't for the women, what would we do? We wouldn't have health or strength or beauty. We wouldn't have a home. We wouldn't have food. If it wasn't for the work of the women, if it wasn't for the women, women, we would not be living, living. We would not be joyful. We wouldn't have love, we wouldn't have truth.
if it wasn't for the work of the women, if it wasn't for the women, women, we would not be living, living, we would not be joyful. That was Alex Dobkin with her classic song, If It Wasn't For The Women. We're now going to take you through the Sisters for Sisters Courage Calls to Courage speaking panel at the Madison Public Library, held in Madison, Wisconsin, on the weekend of April 23rd. We'll start with the pre-show and end with the Speaker's Corner event that followed the panel at the Lady Forward statue in front of the Capitol building. Footage of all the live events is available in their entirety on the WLRN YouTube page. I, Kay Yang, and Jeanette Cooper arrived at the library first. We planned on filming at the library entrance to capture the arrival of the panel attendees. We were met with dozens of protesters there to create a ruckus. There were signs and flags, lots of yelling, dirty looks, cursing, and bright colors. When the filming began, the protesters held a sheet in front of themselves in order to block visibility. As you can hear from the audio, they completely misunderstood why we were there and what we stood for. Ever the Amazon, Kay attempts to engage with the protesters, but as they were only there to be disruptive, those attempts were met with their ignorant rhetoric. At one point, a man stood over Kay and put a speaker in her ear and then followed her around. On multiple occasions, the protesters encroach on her space, touch her with their signs and flags, and engage in sonic assault. After about a half hour of documenting the scene outside, Kay moves inside the library lobby, and you can hear the difference in noise level. Okay, good morning. We are in front of the public library in Madison, Wisconsin. We've got, as you can see, a big group of TRAs that have assembled. They were really um, anxious to have their chants recorded, and they were having a great time yelling at us and calling us names. And now, all of a sudden, they're covering everything up. Why are you worried about what's in children's hands? Are you pedophiles too? is trying to kill children. Why do you want children dead? I'm going to walk around the venue and just give you a little idea of what this space is like right now. We're set up over here in this corner. Women are starting to assemble inside, and then we've got protesters assembled all out here. Audio harassment. That's actually violence in my ears. So Did you want to share your sign? Uh, um, I've been told, right. kiss my ass, bitch. So no one actually wants to have a dialogue with us, which is, uh, you know, typical. But actually, when we were in Atlanta, Georgia last month to protest Leah Thomas's inclusion in the Women's Swim Championships, we did actually have some really great positive dialogue with the counter-protesters. No one here seems to want to conversate. They tell me to shut the shut the up, up, bitch. We've been threatened already several times, and the, you know that's typical. So this man is trying to please get away, please get away from me. You are you are physically standing over my body. That's called male intimidation. Back up. Back up. You do not get to physically intimidate me. Thank you. So this is what's going on from this end. There's the door. This is the gauntlet that women have to face. And I'm being heavily harassed. Stop Stop it! Get the flag away from me! Get the flag away from me! Okay, so as you can see, we are now inside the library. I'll give you a look from in here. We've got quite the crowd that has assembled to silence the free speech of women to target and harass Thistle Pedersen from WLRN, and to target and harass all of the women that have come here to speak up for the sex-based rights of women and girls. I would say there are about at least 100, at least 100 people have showed up to silence us. Absolutely no arguments, empty rhetoric as always. So don't be scared, come out, speak out, show your face, do not be scared. We cannot let these people silence us. The following are clips of each of the panel speakers at the library, starting with Lierre Keith of Deep Green Resistance, followed by WLRN's Thistle Pedersen, 
Partners for Ethical Care's Jeanette Cooper and Turf Collective's Jessica Gonzalez. If you had told me 20 years ago that one day feminists would need armed protection in order to speak, I would not have believed you. And it's not the government that wants me dead, it's not the pornographers in the pants, and not right-wing ideologues. It's entirely men on the left, specifically men who call themselves transgender. Now, how did we get here? So, 6,000 years ago, don't worry, we're going to go fast, uh, <laughs> patriarchy begins. Now, patriarchy is a pyramid, and some people are on top. They extract resources, including labor, from people below them. They have a whole range of social structures to help in that extraction, and an ideology that affirms their right to do it. So there's the material extraction, and then the supporting ideology. Now, around the globe, women face constant insults to our intelligence, our bodies, our lives. One example, the number one reason women go to hospital emergency rooms is battering. That's a man beating up a woman. In the United States alone, a man does that every nine seconds. That is more hatred than I can comprehend. This is the basic insight of feminism. Women share a common condition, and that condition is political. It's not bad luck. It's not choosing the wrong man. It's not created by evolution. And it wasn't ordained by God. None of these horrors are inevitable. Which means our biology is not the problem. According to the UN, sex is the biological and physiological characteristics that define men and women. So sex is simply a fact. Gender, on the other hand, is the socially constructed roles, behaviors, activities considered appropriate for men and women. That's the problem. Gender is the extraction and the ideology. So for male dominance to continue, every generation of boys has to be molded into dominators. Being a, quote, real man requires a psychology of entitlement, emotional numbness, and a dichotomy of self and other. Now, central to masculinity is a violation imperative. Men become, quote, real men by breaking boundaries. For the entitled psyche, the only reason no exists is because it's a sexual thrill to force past it. The real brilliance of patriarchy is right here. It doesn't just naturalize oppression, it sexualizes acts of oppression. It eroticizes domination and submission, and then institutionalizes them is masculinity and femininity. So it naturalizes, it eroticizes, and then it institutionalizes domination and submission. And that's brilliant. The brilliance of feminism is that we figured that out. Female socialization is a process of psychologically constraining and breaking girls, otherwise known as grooming, to create a class of compliant victims. Now across history, this breaking has included so-called beauty practices like foot binding, like female genital mutilation, as well as the ever popular child sexual abuse. Femininity is just the traumatized psyche displaying acquiescence. Gender demarcates the geopolitical boundaries of patriarchy. It divides us in half, but it's not a horizontal. It's vertical. Gender is not some cosmic yin and yang. It's a fist and the flesh that bruises. It's a mouth crushed shut and a girl who will never be the same. Without feminism, the realities of women's lives are unspeakable. Each woman cut adrift in a hostile, chaotic scene. Apply the words sex class, and that chaos snaps into a sharp pattern of subordination from the small daily insults to body and soul, to the shattering traumas of incest and rape. The crimes men commit against women are done because women belong to a subordinate class, and they're done to keep women a subordinate class. It's not personal, and it's not random. It's political, and it's unjust. To get justice for women, we have to dismantle the caste system called gender. Brick by brick, we have to bring it down. We don't accommodate to it, not make the best decision we can inside it, but bring 
is down. One reason we are losing this war is because women refuse to face the nature of these men. Oh, the poor dears suffer from gender dysphoria. No, they don't. Their suffering is entirely self-inflicted. They are obsessed with their subordination fetish to the point that it takes over their personalities and their lives, and they don't care who they destroy in the process. Women in homeless shelters, in prisons, in battered women shelters are being forced to share intimate spaces with men who claim to be women. The dignity and safety of the most vulnerable women have been weighed against the feelings of out and out sexual predators and the feelings of those men who have declared more important. Feminists warn by this women and that they are. I want everyone to imagine the terror of being locked in an 8 by 10 cell with a serial sex killer. This is happening to women. Yep. And in the California prison where this is happening, women are sleeping in shifts. Because none of them are safe to shut their eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So, ultimately, the gender is one of the great men's sexual fetishes. This is a men's sexual rights movement, and for that, they need women's coordination. And people I counted as friends and comrades just want to keep their heads down so they can keep their jobs, hoping that the fever will break because this can't go on. Well, it can, and it can get worse. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm asking the same question I did as a child. Are you for women's liberation? I still want to know who has my back. I want to know who's going to find that unimpeachable bravery and confront male power. And if we can't do it for ourselves, we have to do it for her. Because there is no one else to do it. So one more time. Are you for women's lib? Yes! <laughs> Thank you for attending this special WLRN event in the beautiful city of Madison at our downtown public library. The song I just played by Michael Branch reminds me of the days I spent in Northern California after a long bicycle music tour down the West Coast. I practiced ecstatic dance once a week for nine months in a lovely community center near Garberville on Sundays at an event we fondly referred to as Dance Church. I founded a weekly ecstatic dance practice here in Madison after I got back from my bicycle adventures in 2007. It was mostly women who came and participated, though we didn't have a rule that it be women only. Um, and it was once a week on Sundays at Main Street Yoga right here in Madison. And I did this for five years. Through the years, there were a few men who were asked to leave because they made women feel uncomfortable by leering at them or even sometimes making lewd gestures and touching inappropriately. Not all of the men who joined us did this, but the few who did were asked to leave, except for one. <laughs> um, there was a man who joined and asked to be referred to as she, um, which I thought nothing of at the time. This was like 2012, 2013. And I was fine with him being on the dance floor with us. He would wear mini skirts sometimes, but mostly he kept to himself and I did not feel uncomfortable until one Sunday I looked up and I saw him touching himself and licking his lips during the dance. I told another woman leader in a private meeting what I had seen and I referred to him as he when I did this. And she corrected me and reminded me that he wanted to be referred to as she and also that she thought that I was big enough to just tolerate him and that we didn't need to take any action. And so after that, I didn't feel comfortable anymore going to dance church. The year was 2013, and I was just waking up to what this whole transgender craze is. And I knew that I couldn't stay with this male dancer being allowed to behave how he did, and me being required to call him she. Thank you all for coming to support me in particular, but to support the cause of women's freedom of expression and ability to be in public without harassment. Just to be clear, I do not think that disagreement constitutes harassment of any kind, but rather one's right to disagree and publicly defend one's arguments is fundamental to democracy. What follows are stories of me getting harassed and forced out of Madison's establishment, leftist organizations, publications, and groups due to never backing down on my position that there is no such thing as a special kind of man 
who is actually a woman. I find this trend to be incredibly disrespectful to women, as if we are some sort of costume a man can put on. For me, my lifestyle will always be Lily, low impact luxury living. That's the term we use to describe our choices to be out in the open breeze on bikes instead of inside a building at an office desk or waiting tables or driving a cab. It is liberating to tell the truth and to feel the breeze on your face as you ride. I don't feel like a martyr. I feel like a woman liberated from patriarchal control. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's the cost, which has been required of me for claiming that liberation. A cost I know is demanded of many of us who have done likewise. There are two Madisons that I'm addressing today. The first is the Madison Establishment Left, as represented by WORT 89.9 FM, the Wilmar Neighborhood Center, Wisconsin Network for Peace, Justice, and Sustainability, the Crystal Corner Bar, Tone Madison, and Our Lives Magazine. All of these established media outlets, organizations, and venues in Madison have excluded, defamed, and shunned me in the name of inclusivity because I have publicly made it known that I don't agree with the transgender narrative, that I dissent from its political demands. Establishment Madison not only aims their vitriol at me, they ignore others who dare to stand up to them, hoping to send the message that if they speak up for women's rights, they may lose their livelihoods, their reputations, and their sense of community and friendship in this town. But I've gained so many friends by doing this, so I just want to point that out. struggle for creating the Defend Feminists project shortly after learning about the Wilmar Neighborhood Center's ban on me in 2018. This small group of dedicated activists worked on that project for nearly two years before it became too burdensome and tiring to be ignored after hours and hours of documenting and petitioning in service to the cause of defending women like me from these kinds of attacks. But if you want to see the valiant efforts we made over those two years, please visit defendfeminists.net to read story after story of how Establishment Madison has suppressed and ignored lesbian and radical feminist voices and our supporters. How is our Madison local culture elevated by this choice to exclude me? The answer, of course, is that it is not. It is dumbed down and it is dangerously moving into the territory of authoritarianism. By including music, or by excluding music that does not even talk about trans, because it is not about them, just because I did a few radio shows on WORT highlighting women's concerns about the incoherent concept of gender identity, Establishment Madison is dumbing down Madison's music scene rather than lifting it up. Women are female and this fact is socially significant. Yes. Women are female and saying that we are is not hate speech. <laughs> On such challenge, one such challenge is our assertion that there are times when we need to value boundaries in society, yes. such as those in private women's spaces like showers, locker rooms, sports shelters, sports shelters and prisons. It is not exclusionary to exclude men from the definition of the word woman in the law and in our understanding of physical reality. Yes. Males are not a special kind of female. If they identify as trans or transgender fluid or non-binary. Whether you agree with my statements or not, I have the right to hold my view and express my opinion. Yes. My opinion that transgender politics is misogynistic and harmful to the sex-based rights of girls and women is not a call to hatred. It is a call for justice and dignity for the female half of our species. Loving women does not mean you are fostering a hatred for men or anyone else who may believe something you don't about reality. Our movement for women's liberation has faced this non sequitur for as long as women have stood up to advance our own self-interests. And I was taken by surprise to learn that Madison would be this blind to such blatant hatred of women. I am left to ask, how has our community improved and felt better to all of us because, you're, because of your banning, shunning, ignoring, and ostracizing of me? How has our neighborhood improved since you decided to blacklist me and my band all the while, including a band who screams misogynistic lyrics into a microphone? 
Let's stop excluding females from music and sports. Male-dominated arenas since before the trans trend came along. And please, Madison, it was just a sticker. Felony hate crime charges? Really? <laughs> Sisters, I need to hear your voices. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The most beautiful sound on this earth, the sound of women's voices in solidarity. Thank you. Before we slot through this mess, that is motherhood and gender ideology. I need to ask a few favors. I know that I have not given you anything. And yet I am coming to you asking you for something. But sisters, I would not ask you for something that you cannot give. It is not money, not today. It is not a place to sleep, at least not for tonight. It is not a bra, I have no need or want for that. <laughs> it is not a cat, I have many. <laughs> what I need is for every one of us to give gratitude to the women who have made this event possible, our sisters. Got the girls and old crones, those who have shared their hands and their hearts, dedicated their dollars and their time, moved mountains and materials, the people at podiums, and the one present in this room to bear witness to these stories and this day that we stand together in solidarity with one another. We need each and every one of us, no one of us is expendable, not disposable, not erasable, not transitionable. I will talk about mothers and what we owe them. We all have one. I have one. She is watching this happen right now online. This adult human female who carried us and birthed us and for whom we have so many feelings when we hear the word mother. She is our mother, but she is also our sister. Each mother, including our own, is also our sister because it is she who, along with us, lives under the thick blanket of patriarchy. I ask you, my sisters, to consider each mother, every mother, as a sister one who was born into sisterhood, just as you were, as I was, from the time of your conception to the moment of your birth, female, and thus deserving of space in our sisterhood. This is going to be complicated. It is going to be messy. I personally know a number of mothers of trans-identified children. I have read and heard the stories of even more mothers whose children describe themselves as some sort of trans. None of these mothers gave birth to unicorns, and thus, their children are either female or male human beings and will always be so. I do not believe in unicorns, and I do not believe in this mythological creature called a trans child. There is no such creature. This is mythology, a story that we tell ourselves to make meaning of a phenomenon that makes us uncomfortable. But this insistent, persistent, and consistent myth requires that we pull our heads out of the sand, stop believing in unicorns, and acknowledge that we have more work to do. <laughs> the wonder that we spend our time describing these unicorns, decorating them with rainbows and glitter, styling their hair, giving them names, platforming, and placating them, the more unicorn shit we will have to clean up when we realize they are not unicorns who defecate cotton candy, but yeah. horses. <laughs> horses whose muscles have never gained strength, whose brains have never been allowed to solve problems on their own, whose bodies have atrophied beyond repair, whose natural instincts have been worn down while trapped inside the cages of the man-made, man-marketed, man-centered unicorn land. No matter how a child feels, exactly zero of them were born in the wrong body. And our children from this mess. It is time to clean it up. I am a mother. I gave birth to a girl. 
Her name is Sophia. But it is not my motherhood on which I wish to reflect today. These mothers do not have the strength that comes when you stand beside your sisters in solidarity. These mothers are scared of losing their family, losing their friends, losing their jobs, and losing their child. And it is up to you, to me, to us, to hold the truth in front of their face, but not shove it down their throats. It is up to you, to me, to us, to set a space at our table, to invite and invite and invite again, to show these mothers what strength looks like, what sisterhood looks like, and what they gain when they pick up the line and hold it. are my sisters, that they are women and women are human, that we must be present with them, share space with them, and carry compassion to them. And what these mothers need most is courage. Their intuition has been buried so deeply from teachers and neighbors and therapists and media and doctors and our government. The layers of lies littering her brain must be unpacked piece by piece until sparks of truth can light her path out of this mess. These mothers are doing the best they can, and they are failing to protect their children. Because they are our sisters, we must help them if we wish all children to be protected. No one will be abandoned in our sisterhood. We need each and every one of us, and we are all capable of growing. Let us create space for these sister mothers to grow in our presence. <coughs> Let us give them water, let us give them light, let us give them courage. Say it now with me to all of the mothers who need strength to speak the intuitive truth that is still inside of us. Let us give them courage. Courage! It is a beautiful day outside, but there is so much warmth and light in this room. Will you please stay with me feeling this warmth? Seeing the light of us shine from this stage, stay with me. More sisters are going to speak, and what a blessing it is upon us to hear their voices. Blessed be. Blessed, Blessed be. be. Thank you, sisters. <coughs> My name is Jessica Gonzalez, and I'm not scared of shit. is current calls to courage, and I want to use this time I have to call on your courage. My personal opinion is that we do not have enough women that have shown up to be counted in this fight, and we will need many more in order to win, and the sooner they show up, the better. To be genuinely emancipatory, we will need more women. Yes. 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 There are plenty of women like me who are uncancelable. We work in industries where gender ideology has not yet taken root or where adherence to it isn't being enforced. Some of us might not work for an employer at all. Some of us are even retired or work in the home in some capacity. There is energy to be tapped there. At the same time, I recognize that many women are not in that same situation. And even many women that are uncancelable don't exactly realize it yet because we've been bombarded with this messaging about how forbidden it is to be a Turk. What makes me special enough to be here speaking to you today is that around this time last year, I had two ideas that really kind of took off. The first was Turf Collective, and the second was our target action. Right. Turf Collective is a group that was born when it occurred to me that all we turfs on Facebook that spend so much time trolling trans identity supremacy activists and even each other might be served by having regular meetings. What happens at Turf Collective? Women come by to share the struggle of living with people that believe in trans ideology. We talk about falling out with family and friends over our differences. We talk about strained relationships, fear at work, ideas for combating the narrative. Most importantly of all, we come together to reassure one another 
that no matter what experience you've just recently had that has made you feel like you are all alone and the walls are closing in, that you are not and they are not. We also platform really difficult conversations about feminism in general, the place of race in radical feminism and what boundaries must and should be respected by women of different races in order to build a real solidarity, for example. We talk about the fourth industrial revolution and the connections between transgenderism and transhumanism. We talk about whether we can work with and trust any men we talk about whether we can and should work with conservatives, and if so, to what extent. By far, our favorite topic to discuss remains activism. We love to talk about our ideas. We love to hear a good idea and add to it. We love to hear reports from sisters that just undertook an action. How did it go? Was there good engagement? Did you get a lot of support? Any detractors? Tell us everything. I want you to get a Zoom account or a Jitsi account, or maybe you'll start a chat or call group on WhatsApp or Signal or Telegram or Discord. Start your own group for TERFs that meet regularly to discuss the most important questions we are all dealing with right now. What are we going to do and how are we going to do it? This will probably sound corny. But I genuinely believe that any time women share space to talk about the harms of patriarchy, we are winning a small battle within a larger war. Before I move on from this topic, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't take the time to acknowledge the great debt the Turf Collective owes Thistle Patterson. Wisconsin today. She has been toiling diligently for over five years now, archi archiving the contemporary radical feminist movement, and that six years. Six years, years. Sorry, and that deserves our recognition and deep gratitude. Thank you, Thistle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Radical feminism will indeed remember Thistle Patterson. Thistle was one of our first members and remains one of our most enthusiastic supporters. She was the first to give me a platform and have me speak about Turf Collective. She was the first person in a position to take Turf Collective seriously that did take Turf Collective seriously. She is very important to Turf Collective and to the movement in general. This past summer, Thistle, as we all know, was charged in the city for a crime that doesn't yet even exist in this jurisdiction. Namely, hate speech, specifically around the nebulous and forcible notion of gender identity. This charge was brought on the basis of her having allegedly placed a church collective sticker on a magazine box. To this day, I still have no earthly idea who put that fucking sticker there. <laughs> That same box. I attended Thistle's hearing, which was held virtually. The district attorney quickly conceded that Madison has no foundation for a charge of hate crime against turf speech as gender identity is not a class covered by the hate crime statute. Yes. The judge held that the speech was protected by the First Amendment. With that, Thistle was the woman that single-handedly showed in a court of law that Turf Collective won't wish. Sometimes we'll consider whether our efforts are worth it, but they are. They always are. You were stronger after you did it than you were before. You were a better soldier in the struggle than you were before, and for that reason alone, it was worth it. Courage is a muscle. If you've never worked, used it before, it will be weak. It will ache at first use. Over time, it will get stronger. Over time, you will get better. Over time, we'll all get better. We'll keep leveling up and picking more women and spreading a message until one day we will finally win.
Your participation can make the difference now. We may yet herald the dawn of a new day. So please join us. Thank you very much. From the library, we moved on to our final event of the day, the Speaker's Corner. This was meant to be a soapbox-style demonstration, engaging the public about the issues of sex-based rights and protections and women's free speech. We were holding it at the Lady Forward statue at the Capitol Building in Madison. Earlier in this broadcast, you heard our interaction with the police and our efforts to get them to enforce the permit Thistle had secured for the space. With that lack of support from law enforcement, the protesters that awaited us at the Capitol were allowed to encroach on our space and be as disruptive as they had the energy to be. This is our speaker's corner for Madison. Everybody is welcome to speak. We ask that uh, ladies first, of course, but everybody is welcome. Welcome everyone to this wonderful event in honor of this whole Madison. So I guess I will be, I am the first speaker. My name's Jennifer Thomas. I started a group called Rev Femme Rebellion and I have gone on boots on the ground all across America trying to figure out the temperature of America. And what I found is that everybody knows. Everybody knows. And you know how I know this? Because everybody knows to shut up. That's how I know that. And people are afraid, but with this Will Thomas episode, we have brought attention to this issue and people are getting less and less afraid to speak up about this. The next thing that I'm focusing on for Boots on the Ground is to go into schools and talk to the school boards and root this out, pull it out by the root. And the mothers are coming. The mothers are calling me every day. They want, they want resources to go into the schools and they're coming and we are a powerful force. I am a woman. I've been a woman for a little over half my life. I wasn't born a woman. No one's born a woman. I became a woman. I became one through the one and only path to womanhood. And that is girlhood. I was born a girl. It didn't take a decision or an assessment or an assignment to recognize me as a girl. And for 99.999% of us, it's just that simple. And anybody that's trying to tell you that it's more complicated than that is lying to you. My friend Beth Stelter over here who's been working tirelessly to defend women's sports and our rights to have sports. For those women who are strong for a woman and strong for a girl, your sports matter and you deserve to have sports. And your wins matter. Every win matters. If you join me in this fight, if we do it together, woman to woman, two minutes at a time. You get two minutes at the school board and the city council. Two minutes at a time. I will never, ever forget what an adult human female is and that I am one and I am here. My name is Beth. I'm an organizer of this weekend. I came, I came here to Madison to speak about the dangers of gender identity politics and transgender ideology. I'm a mother, I'm a radical feminist, I'm a progressive. Like so many women here today, I am politically homeless because the Democrats have abandoned women. On his first day in office, President Biden signed an executive order calling for the passage of the Equality Act, which allows for sex self-ID that replaces the category of sex with that of gender identity and erases women. This has opened the door for men to be allowed into women's prisons where they rape and assault women. Women's domestic violence shelters where they re-traumatize vulnerable women. Women's sports where they dominate women and girls who have worked their whole lives for achievements to be stolen by otherwise average male athletes. A generation of children are harmed by believing that their feelings are an identity and are failed by the adults entrusted to protect them. Physically healthy girls as young as 13 receive double mastectomies, 
parents are losing custody of their children for refusing to validate their gender identity. Thousands of detransitioners live to regret lifelong medical decisions made without the foresight to see the fallout of such decisions but surrounded by trusted adults who would only affirm them and are now left alone to navigate those consequences. Trans rights are not the civil rights issue of our time. Gender identity politics harm women and girls, gays and lesbians and other marginalized communities. We must stand up and say so before it's too late. I am an elementary school counselor and I oppose gender ideology ever entering the walls of my school building on my dead fucking body will my students be exposed to the harms of gender identity ideology i exist in this world to serve children i exist to protect children fuck transgenderism fuck it fuck these people behind us who want children to have on Vetted access to hormones, wrong sex hormones, and surgery. Absolutely not. None of this will happen. Let women speak. 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 Hi, my name is Artemis Passionfire. Some people know me as Diana Goldman, and I got a host of other names, okay? <laughs> but it's necessary at this time. I've been at this fight for 30 damn years. I came out in 1981. Dyke witches brought me out. Women were proud to be women. Lesbians were proud to be lesbians. It was butch lesbians who mentored me. I'm proud to be a butch lesbian. When I was a kid, right on sisters. I just wanted my rights as a girl. I fought for those rights, whether it was with boys, whatever. You're not gonna leave me out, but I wanted to be a boy. I wanted all the rights that boys had. I didn't want a penis. I wanted the rights boys had and could take for granted. We've all been victimized one way or another. One out of three women get raped, you know. And in England, they show that trans so-called women have the same level of criminality as any other man with a pension for sexual crimes. These are statistics, and that 14,000 girls have wanted to transition over the last, past many years. They never had that many wanting to transition. They want to run away from womanhood. They want to cut off their titties and run away from womanhood because it's hard to be a goddamn woman. It really is hard. It's hard because we've had 6,000 years of patriarchy over it, beating down our throats. Whether you're a boy or a like me, a tomboy is not trans, boys you know, come out to be strong butch women or just lesbians in general and that we can be proud to be women loving women and I will fight for our born female space till the day I fucking die. <laughs> Goddess bless sisters, you are strong and I am proud of every single one of you. Blessed be. <laughs> Adult human female. Biology is not bigotry, it's simply just a fact. Speak the truth, it's not a hate crime. Women fight back! Women fight back! Biology is not bigotry, it's simply just a fact. Speak the truth, it's not a hate crime. Women fight back! Women fight back! Biology is not bigotry, it's simply just a fact. Speak the truth, it's not a hate crime. Women fight back! Women fight back! I used to think I was trans for seven years, and I just want to say thank you for finding me before I hurt myself. Thank you for welcoming me, welcoming me home, sisters. I'm going to be short and sweet. I'm going to tell you the truth here. Here's the real truth. No one is born in the wrong body. No one. It's a physical impossibility. You are born the way you are born. And telling a child 
that they are born in the wrong body and that there's something wrong with them is child abuse. No child commits suicide because they're misgendered. Children are committing suicide because they're told to hate their parents. They are told by teachers that they're really not the gender that they were born. They are being told that doctors may have made a mistake with their sex. The number of transgender people that commit suicide post, that's right, post transition is 19% higher, 19% higher after transitioning. Those are the true facts. Let's do a reprise, shall we? I'm looking for all of those dead trans kids' bodies. They are nowhere because they do not exist. None of these mothers gave birth to unicorns, and thus their children are either female or male human beings and will always be so. I do not believe in unicorns, and I do not believe in this mythological creature called a trans child. The longer that we spend our time describing these unicorns, decorating them with rainbows and glitter, styling their hair, giving them names, platforming and placating them, the more unicorn shit we will have to clean up when we realize that they are not unicorns who defecate cotton candy, but horses whose muscles have never gained strength, whose brains have never been allowed to solve problems on their own, whose bodies have atrophied beyond repair, whose natural instincts have been worn down while trapped inside the cages of the man-made, man-marketed, and man-centered universe, no matter how a child feels exactly zero of them were born in the wrong body. Um, so I know it seems scary. I know it seems like men are taking over our spaces. I know it seems like porn sick men are making demands of women telling us how to define ourselves. Let women speak. Let women speak. Let women speak. I just wanted to say that men's rights movements come in all different shapes and sizes. But the end goal is always to silence, shame, and subjugate confident and intelligent women to succumb to men's needs and desires. Wake up, you still have time to leave. You still have time to dissent and join women. I'm Elizabeth. I'm an adult human female. You do not need to change your body. Lesbian girls and women do not need to change their bodies. Lesbians are fine. Let children grow up to be lesbians if that's who they're going to grow up to be. Gay boys have nothing wrong with their body. Gender non-conforming boys who like to wear sparkly princess dresses and nail polish have nothing wrong with them. Let them be who they are. Let me say a few things. What is wrong with this society that 132 women a day are murdered and nobody cares? What is wrong with a society that does not value women or children? I say, I am here, here I am, and not past me will you go. 132 women. I have a lot of compassion for the men and the women who have fallen into this gender cult. This is a marketing campaign that according to MarketWatch, we all should be investing in. It's going to be a $6 billion industry by 2025. So get your money ready. You want to make a killing, do it on the bodies of these children who are very confused because they're teaching them in school that a boy can be a girl. And the way to do it is to put yourself under the knife, to put yourself on drugs, to join in the capitalist wet dream of medicalizing somebody's identity.
I'm not speaking to the women activists, and I'm not speaking to the trans activists. I'm speaking to the people who are on the sidewalks. I just want you to notice who is trying to silence who. The women here are just trying to speak. We are giving information. We are telling our stories. We are being compassionate. They are setting off alarms, fucking with the mic system, hawking the horns, being rude and disrespectful. Look, notice, notice who, who is trying to silence who here? I've got some follow-up to that. Um, I just want to talk about WORT 89.9 FM Madison. It's the community radio station here. It's been around since the 1970s, and they just announced last week that their policy changed, that the Access Hour, which is uh, a program once a week that anybody in the community can sign up to do, the program exists because the founders of WORT believe in free speech. They also would not even mention that Sisters for Sisters and this rally right here, there's no media here except for DIY indie media, Women's Liberation Radio News. The reason why WLRN exists is because we have a media blackout. The reason why the majority of Americans don't know that this is an issue and a problem is because it's not being reported on and it's because these people are silencing us and they're not allowing us to be have access to public airwaves to have civil dialogue and discussion which is the point of uh, democracy to make decisions that are good we have to have civil dialogue and discussion it is not hate speech for women to assert our rights it is not hate speech for women to have access to the public airwaves gender identity is not based in biological objective reality rather and it is a purely subjective clever corporate fiction being used as a trojan horse for the worldwide destruction of female sex-based rights and the erasure of the sexually dimorphic reality of humanity i have become a whistleblower working to document, expose, and publicly speak out about the attack our children on children that is being coordinated through the collusion of the state, corporate, and private sectors who use seemingly benevolent nonprofit organizations like GLAD and GLSEN to push propaganda and target children in our public school systems. This is an international agenda being pushed by global governing bodies like the World Economic Forum and the United Nations. This is about taking vulnerable, gender non-conforming children, vulnerable gay, lesbian, and bisexual youth, and funneling them into the trans machine. Instead of being given any options, instead of being given any options, and we are going to close our speaker's corner. Um, I want to leave you with one word. Resist. And courage! The experience was at once overwhelming and empowering. And with the numbers these TRA foot soldiers have, it's seriously crucial that we come out in numbers as well to whatever event you and your local sisters can organize. They have to meet resistance. It must be visible that we do not consent to being colonized, that we care about our children and our incarcerated sisters. It's also very important to note that aside from the APGs and other fetishists that this quote unquote cause attracts, Many, many, many of these protesters are young people who are struggling with their identities and sexualities. And they, just as Kat said in the pre-show, are being exploited by authorities and corporations. Their parents, as a matter of fact, society at large right now, 
are being emotionally blackmailed, gaslit, pressured, and shamed into going along with this agenda. Who do you think wants the best for the health and well-being of your child? You, their parent, or corporations, pharmaceutical and biomed companies, the government, and social media magnets? I digress. We must remember at these events that many on the other side of that line are children, and they shouldn't be demonized. We are here to stand for the rights of women, and part of that is protecting children from the harms the gender industry presents, even when those children are throwing a tantrum. From across the femisphere to women worldwide, worldwide, to women worldwide, radical feminist media to break the sound barrier, break the sound barrier, break the sound barrier, break the sound barrier, radical feminist media to break the sound barrier. This is your, 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 your grassroots community radio station, your radio station, grassroots. This is your grassroots community radio station, women's liberation radio Radio News. news. I did not attend the Courage Calls to Courage weekend in Madison, but I am proud of the women who did, including WLRN's Thistle Patterson, without whom the events there would not have happened. Thistle and the other organizers created a physical space for women to speak out on behalf of their own political interests and boundaries and to point out their sex-based oppression. That's the kind of material activism, the kind of direct action the feminist movement has been missing for decades. And it has an impact both on the women who participate and the women who watch the action online. WLRN has received a wave of enthusiastic support across our social media platforms from women who didn't or couldn't attend Courage Calls to Courage, thanking the organizers and speakers and expressing their sense of inspiration. I'm sure the women who actually showed up, whether to listen to the panel speakers or say their own piece at the speaker's corner, felt inspired too. It's one thing to talk shop and raise consciousness on the internet. It's something else to see other women face to face, hear their voices in the same space, and feel their physical presence as you all take a stand for women's rights and interests together. Doing feminist work with other women in person reminds you that you are not alone. It reminds you how real the struggle and the resistance are. Everything becomes clearer in person, and, I'm guessing, for the women of Courage Calls to Courage, less hopeless. Of course, men and their female supporters showed up to protest this feminist event. Of course, they tried to shout down and talk over the women brave enough to take the mic at the speaker's corner. Of course, men in drag and their supporters, including women, harassed and tried to intimidate the feminists and other female attendees. That's all par for the course now. We're lucky the event didn't get bomb threats as some radical feminist and transgender critical events have experienced in the past. We're lucky the violent heterosexual men of Antifa and their ilk didn't show up to assault feminists the way they showed up to assault women protesting outside the Wee Spa in LA, where a het man in drag exposed his dick to women and underage girls in their changing room. We're lucky the cops didn't get involved, as they always escalate the violence and as predominantly heterosexual men cannot be trusted to protect unarmed feminists against aggressive anti-feminist men. I don't know how to evaluate the success of Courage Calls to Courage. More women are waking up to the poisonous and misogynistic nature of the transgender movement, but unconditional support of it is still obviously a deal breaker in liberal and leftist circles online and off. The Democratic Party has made it clear that transgenderism is their chosen brand of misogyny and anti-homosexuality. I don't expect that will ever change, no matter what the fallout is. I'm a pessimist, so optimistic women will probably disagree with me there. In any case, transgenderism isn't going anywhere anytime soon. It's too profitable now. It's too convenient a cover for liberal men's misogyny and liberal heterosexism. But liberal and leftist women will continue to break rank and reject the movement at the price of their political peers' acceptance. I have no idea if there'll ever be a majority of card-carrying Democrat women and self-described progressive, Marxist, anarchist, socialist, and leftist women. Perhaps not. 
But there will be a steady stream of defectors who show up to the transgender critical and radical feminist camps looking for women here to assure them they aren't crazy for thinking gender identity is bullshit. For having a problem with schools indoctrinating children into the cult. For being unwilling to give up women's sports and to see naked men with hard-ons in their locker rooms. And for not supporting the prison system transferring convicted male rapists and murderers to women's prisons the second those men claim to be women. It should be every single woman and girl in the nation recoiling at all this, feeling compassion for the female victims of trans-identifying males and disgusted anger toward those males instead of the other way around. But it isn't. Too many women will remain cooperative, submissive, even enthusiastically supportive of this gender identity movement because they are misogynists and male supremacists themselves. It takes self-respect to choose women over men. It takes courage. The women who showed up in Madison to hear trans critical and radical feminist women speak and to publicly denounce the gender identity movement with their own voices have that courage and self respect. I applaud them. This is how we give female kind a fighting chance, one action at a time. Thanks for listening to WLRN's 73rd edition podcast, covering events in Madison, Wisconsin, the weekend of April 23rd. WLRN would like to thank everyone that made the events possible, especially Beth Lowe, Lear Keith, Thistle Pedersen, and Arla Heil. It's exhausting emotionally and physically, but we will show up for women every time. Try us. Until next time, this is Jenna signing off on another WLRN podcast. If you like what you are hearing and would like to donate to the cause of Feminist Community Radio, please visit our WordPress site and click on the Donate button. Check out our merch tab to get a nice gift in exchange for your donation. And if you are interested in joining our team, we are always looking for new volunteers to conduct interviews, write blog posts, post to our Facebook and other social media pages, and do other tasks to keep us moving forward as a collective of media activist women. Thanks for listening. This is April No, signing off for now. And I am Thistle Patterson. Thanks for tuning in. Next month, we will focus our program on the teaching of trans ideology in public schools and children's books that are used to indoctrinate children. We are excited to welcome back WLRN staff writer Aurora Linnea, who proposed this topic and will be offering up her essay on womensliberationradionews.com in the coming weeks. Our handcrafted podcasts always come out the first Thursday of the month, so look for it on Thursday, June 2nd. If you'd like to receive our newsletter that notifies you when each podcast, music show, and interview are released, please sign up for our newsletter on the WLRN WordPress site. Stay strong in the struggle, and thanks for listening. This is Emily Ann signing off on another edition of WLRN's monthly handcrafted podcast. You can find us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Spinster, Over It, and SoundCloud, in addition to our WordPress site. Thanks for listening. And this is Aurora, delighted to be back after several long months away. Our monthly podcasts are always crafted with tender loving care and in solidarity with women worldwide. Thank you so much for your support. We would love to hear from you, so please do share, like, and comment widely. for the patriarchal kiss how will we find what needs to be shown and then after that where is home tell me where is my home cause gender hurts